Okay, we come back to the full study. How much of fools that we are. That we didn't know we are. And just one thing the Bible says is not to be a fool. And that's what these studies are for. We're on number 48. And still in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 23. It's a sport. That's an interesting word. To do to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding has wisdom. Okay, we're in the contradicting verses now. And the contradiction is you have a fool versus a man of understanding and wisdom. So a fool lacks understanding, lacks wisdom. And for him, according to this verse, he likes to do sports. His athletics is mischief. He's a practical joker. He is folly to somebody else. He's the one at the office will, you know, practice little jokes and do things, you know, for a laugh. And we all know people like that. I was like that at one time, and I, I, I taught my, I got my lesson taught. Had to eat a lot of crow, and I don't do it no more. But that's foolish. And you're out there doing jokes and practical jokes to people. For a laugh. Oh, isn't it funny? No. The Bible says you're a fool. Proverbs eleven twenty nine. I didn't say it. The Bible. This is all Bible. I'm reading right along with you a King James 1611 Bible. If you got a problem with it, you need to get right. It says, He that touches his own house, of trouble his own house, shall inherit the wind. Not much. You don't even know where the wind comes from. You don't even know where the wind's going. You have no sense of direction. And a fool, and a fool. So the fool here, not only we're going to represent a fool, but he's the one that gives trouble to his house. The fool shall be a servant to the wise of heart. Getting on a contradiction verse here. The fool versus a wise. There is no wisdom, there is no wise of a fool, and he causes trouble to his house. Now, if he's causing trouble to his house, what do you think that does for the foolish man's family? It causes sorrowness, sadness. Trouble brings hardship. It brings an uneasement. And that's the qualification of a fool. And the fool is never going to go anywhere a rank of a corporate ladder or a company ladder because he's always going to be the servant to the wise because the wise is better than the fool and the wise knows more to overpower the fool. So the fool is defenseless. The fool is positionless. And the fool will have no representation of authority except for in America. Because in America, we got laws in the labor market today that you must hire this person. You must hire them people. You must hire that person regardless. And we have even have a, a foolish statement. As, it's not what you know, according to the Bible. It is who you know. Well, the Bible says it's what you know is what gets you somewhere. But America, you know, you can have a foolish person, but, you know, money, standard personality or anything like that we are a foolish nation look at the results and the fruits of this country of the, our products and our standards and our ways and our sinfulness we don't have wise people leading the leadership of this country we have fools they're in there because not what they know because it says again the fool shall be a servant to the wise of heart the fool is not wise so a lot of our advancement of authority today in America are foolish. And they're not in there for what they know. It's who they know. It's what the law said that you had to put them there. The Proverbs 11.20 says, The fool serves and never rules, but America always seems to go against the standard of the Bible. Proverbs 12.15 I mean, you're going to say God bless America when we go against the Bible. We go against God. 
in Jesus Christ. There will be no blessing. The way of a fool. So there is a way of the fool when Jesus says, I am the way. A fool will say, I got my way. And the foolish way would be, as far as salvation, would be religion, education, and science. And those ways will not get you into heaven. The fool, the way of the fool, right in his own eyes. But he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. Again, another contradiction. A fool is not wise, and a wise is not fool. And there is a way of the fool. But the counsel of the wise, there's no counsel with the fool. A fool says, okay, this is it, and doesn't check with people, doesn't ask people, doesn't check. Doesn't get approval. Doesn't say, hey, this is my idea. This is my way. Can you help me find any flaws in it? No, this is the way I'm going to do it. And that's it. Where a wise man, he would go and seek his friends. He would go seek people who are in that subject of knowledge, of understanding and wisdom. He would not go to a fool. And a fool would not go to a wise man. And everything that a fool does, and I deal with them with public ministry, and if you are in a public ministry, you've dealt with fools that no matter what you show them with the Bible, they're going to remain in their way of foolish. No matter what counsel you give them of God, and I've dealt with them, and pretty much my jury of Jehovah Witnesses, I personally have dealt with, they're fools. I will lay them out scripture, and have them read the scripture, and they will still come away with Jesus is not God. The counsel is, the Bible says that Jesus is God, but oh, we don't. Then your way is foolish. My way of the right counsel is Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. They have their way, and it's not the truth, and it's not going to produce life. It's going to produce death and the wrath of God. So, it's the fool versus the wise over and over and over again, Proverbs. If there's one thing Proverbs does for, the, for this, the study of the fool that we're doing now, there's no wisdom in a fool. A fool is never wise. What he is doing, what he believes, whatever he is, whatever will will become of his life is right. By his own standards. And. He greatly disagrees with life. He disagrees with wisdom. He disagrees with God in the Bible. He sees himself well off. He will not seek the wisdom of God. He will not seek the wisdom of others. So thus. He's prone to do wrong and be unwise, be a fool. Proverbs 12, 16. The fool's wrath is presently, presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. So again, we have this contradiction. I don't mean contradiction in the Bible. I mean, here's a fool. What's the contradiction to that? A prudent man. A fool is not prudent. He's not looking out, say, okay, if I go there, if I sign this paper, okay, what's the consequences of this paper? If I say I will be here on such and such date, what is the consequences of that appointment? People say, okay, just give me the paper. All right, I'll just be there. Oh, I'll just believe this. Or the prudency versus the fool. There is nothing good to be said about fools except one. In his heart, he makes foolishness known. An open mouth, insert foot. His wrath, he gets angry. He gets, oh, and he shows it. I get angry. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. I mean, I've gotten angry and sin. I've gotten angry and have not sinned. But a foolish man is, uh, watch him. As soon as he gets mad, the maddest thing, he's going to show it. I mean, there are times for me when I get mad, I'm going to show it. As soon as he gets mad, the maddest thing, he's going to show it. I mean, there are times for me with impatience at the light. I get a red light, get angry, I don't show nothing. And then there are times I come to the, a different red light and I, get, I blow my temper. That's foolish. It's a sin. 
Why? What, what was the worth to it? The Bible says be angry. There's nothing wrong with being angry unless you sin. I am deeply, deeply angry with Jehovah Witnesses and Catholics, the organization. Catholics, because my entire fa half my family, my mom's side of the family, are Catholic. And I am left today with, I know there are people who come out of the Catholic Church, they're saved, and they're in glory today. I know it. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then there are some Catholics in my family, I look at them like, they've died, I'm like, I don't know where they are. I witness to them. Thankful for that. But I don't know where they are. And then there are Catholics in my family. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, by their works and by what they show outwardly, they're not saved. Because their belief of the Catholic Church and what they believe it goes against what the Bible believes for salvation. And the hierarchy of the Catholic Church and the institution of the Catholic Church and the Jehovah Witnesses are against the Bible. I get angry and I deal with them, but I don't blow my top with them. Though sometimes I have to fight it. Again, when I'm jo dealing with Jehovah Witness, I'm angry that they have pulled Christians out of good churches, out of the good Bible, and has perverted them. And dealing with people and showing them a false gospel and a Jesus that's not God in their thing, and that gets me mad. But they haven't sinned. In public ministry, I've gotten angry. I've gotten upset. There's things that happen. I've sinned. And I look like a fool. And I know I've been the fool. when I've gotten mad like that. But according to this verse right here, a fool in his temper and his anger and his wrath. It says he always blows his top. He always goes off on the, on the deep end. I may play a fool at times through anger. But it's not all the time. Now, people have tagged me, you know, he, he, he's arrogant, he's, he's angry, and all, not all the time. A lot of times they get my meaning, uh, you know, misread. Sometimes they take my sarcasm as anger. And believe me, I am laughing on the inside. But a fool. Let's not be fools. Let's not be fools. The wrath of the fool. Proverbs 13, 19. The lip of truth. Jesus said, I'm the truth. The lip of truth shall be established forever. With the Bible. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. When you witness some, somebody, that never goes away. When you speak the truth, the true gospel, that is forever settled in heaven. Either for eternity, you're going to believe on that truth and go off into New Jerusalem for all eternity, or you're going to go off into hell by dis disobeying, not giving here to the gospel. And but the words will speak for eternity as you are burning in hell, in the lake of fire. What well, speak the truth? The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. And that is definitely not what So what I have here, nine, this is one of those mistakes that I made. Oh, 13, 19. No. Well, I got off a little hand here. 13, 16. All right, somewhere I got off. 12, 23. Well, yeah, I went off on this one. 12, 23. I apologize. 12.23. A prudent man. Here's the prudency of a man again. Made an extra part with somebody listening. I don't, a prudent man concealeth knowledge. Why? It's not the proper time for knowledge. There's a time to shut up and there's a time to speak. You got a group of people. All right. One man in that group has done something wrong. A prudent man going to say, oh, I'll wait till he's alone. I'm not going to embarrass him. And when he's alone, say, sir, ma'am, and then whatever, 
thing is. That's prudency. That's prudency. But the heart of the fools proclaim its foolishness. So we have an anger of the foolishness, the wrath of the foolishness. We've got the lips of a foolishness. And we've got a heart that's foolish. And the heart that's foolish is not of prudency. It's nothing of prudent. There's that contra again. So we have the prudence of uh, and versus the fool. A fool will speak when it's improper, where the prudent man will speak at the right moment. A fool will just blurt it right out, out of order. It's not right. He has no logic of his heart and his mind of the wisdom to say, not now. This is not the right time. This is not the right place. It's in his heart to be foolish. Proverbs 13, 16. Every prudent man, okay, here we go with prudency again. And these, these are in order. Now, I messed it up a little bit. I apologize. But these are in order. And look how even though we're going from chapter to chapter, we seem to be going right along the, the right line here. I mean, I don't think Solomon said, oh, in chapter 12, I'm going to talk about the prudency of a, and a fool. I think I'll move it over to chapter 13 again. And there were no chapter markings. So, 13, 16, every prudent man dealeth with knowledge. Again, that's what we just read. There's that knowledge. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the, the heart of the fool proclaimeth foolishness. But a fool, verse 16, layeth open his folly. So a man of prudence will apply what he knows. A fool, you can't say, no, he's just foolish. Look at that guy. Look how, look how he put that problem. Look how he dealt with that problem. And look at the end results. Well, look at that idiot over there. Look at that idiot. Stupid. That's foolish. That's foolishness. Who wants to be like that? It's and in regard of God, he's gonna lay out before God one day at the great white throne judgment. Oh, I I did beads, I did magazines, I did this, I television, I get and all that is just foolishness. In God, when he's standing before the God that suffered and died for that fool, and that fool would not believe and take the wise counsel of the Bible and life. Foolishness. Foolishness. 1319. This is where I wanted 19 and got messed up. The desire. Oh, what I want. Desire accomplished. It's to finish what you started. To set out a goal. I'm at part A and I want to get to that finish line. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Now, have, you, have you ever done anything? Have you ever accomplished anything? In my lifetime, I've, I've gone for a high school diploma. I've gone through uh, the doctor's degree here of uh, uh, the, theology, theology. And I, I've gone to college for, for office management. I've gone through those things, and I can look at that diploma and say, hey, you know what? I worked hard for it. All that hard work, and there's the accomplishment. And today, I, I, have, I have a brother in the Lord called me up, and he wants to know about this, this scripture we're going to talk about later, and that's the accomplishment. Oh, God has taught me the word of God. How great it is that I can help others. But we're not on the fool yet. But it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. Oh boy. How is that one? How is that one? Hatred as God is to sin and sinners. The abomination. 
are the fools that will not stop from sinning. Fools detest getting right. You are a fool when you are sinning and you are not fighting that sin and you will not give in to that sin and you'll give it to God and give it up. You're a fool, according to scriptures. As God has abomination works of man that does against God, a fool has an abomination of doing right to God. Thou shalt confess thy confession. But a fool will never confess. A fool will never get it right with God. A fool will never battle sin. He enjoys it. Remember, it was sport for him when we started off. So what God sees as hatred that man does, a fool will see as hatred to do against God. Fools detest getting right. Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. You will get from the wise men. You will listen to those wise men. You will ask them wise, full questions. You will gain the knowledge of those wise men being with them. But a companion of fools... A companion of wise men will make you wiser. A companion of fools will be destroyed. Oh. Well, look at that. They didn't think that was going to happen, did you? They didn't think that was possible. But there it is. So, when we look at the fool today, when we study the fool from 48 to 55, we have seen a fool to have sport of actions, of his athletical abilities of being foolish and mischief. We have seen the fool that troubled his house. And he's never going to go anywhere unless you pass laws to force him up a ladder or a ranking where the Bible says he shouldn't have. We have had a fool where he, whatever he does, despite wisdom and knowledge and wise people, whatever he does is right. And he will not ever seek a wise man to get the counsel to show he's wrong. He wants to remain in his foolishness. The fool's wrath, his anger, is always. It's extreme anger. Wrath. Not just getting angry, but wrath. The Muslim religion is a foolish religion for their wrath to convert. You convert or we're going to chop off your head. You convert or we'll, you know, we'll do you injustice. We'll take you out of our family if you turn to Christ. Those who do not convert it are killed. That is the wrath of a religion that are fools. A person that kills an innocent person because one rejected them is foolish. A fool was Adolf Hitler. His wrath against the Jews are very known today. And there are people who are trying to proclaim that, that World War II and the concentration camps never happened, but they did. They're there to show yourself to be foolish. We have seen the fools proclaim their foolishness. Look at me. I'm the idiot. And yet he is a contra not only to the wise man, but he's also contra to the man of prudency, where a man will study out before he does, and a fool will go charging. A prudent man will count down before war and say, Do I have enough? Do I have enough men? Do I have enough armor? Do I have enough ammunition? Do I have enough power to go against that king? A fool will jump on a house and run into a brick wall. And the idiot will get up and do it again. Because foolishness. And then we have the fool. This lays up his foolishness. 
It's a public foolishness. When we started this thing off with the sport of a fool, sports are, you know, they're in the papers. They're in the magazines. They're on television. They're on the radio. They're for the public to see, and so is that foolish man. Here I am. I'm the fool. And no joy to God. No joy to others. A fool abomination is not that sin is an abomination. A fool's abomination is I will not depart from sin. I will not convert. I will not repent. I will not get right. It's abomination for me to give that up. That's a fool. And then a fool's companions, when a fool gets with other fools to have a foolish time, they're going to be brought to destruction. Destruction. They've already destroyed their lives. Openly, publicly. Foolishness. It's not something that God wants us to be. It's not something that the Bible says, be ye a fool. No, it doesn't say that. The Bible requires us to be wise, to be knowledgeable, to be understanding. What is lacking? And then to be prudent. Make sure we look over, we study to show thyself approved under God. A fool has a modern Bible. He said, well, how can you say that, Stiley? Because a fool has a Bible that does not say study. There's only one Bible on the market that will tell you to study and show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of, rightly dividing the word of truth. Does a wise man get ashamed by what we studied? Uh, no, he gets ashamed, but not all the time. But where does his shame come from? It comes from a fool that will not study. A fool that will not go to wisdom. A fool that will not be prudent. A fool that will not obey God. But it's sport for that fool to do what's against God. What's against the Bible. To go against the truth. To go against the life. And to go against his own way. When Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, the fool has his own way. The fool doesn't have the truth. And he's going to get destruction instead of light. So pretty much a foolish man is a lost man. A foolish man is one that has rejected Jesus Christ as his Savior. A fool can be a Christian when he rejects what the Bible says about Christian growth. We ought not to be foolish. We ought not to be fools. 